Okay, in this podcast we're going to talk about um, titrations involving polyprotic acids. And of course, polyprotic means more than one more than one proton. And uh, we call those protons uh, sometimes labile uh, protons, meaning donatable protons. Okay. So let's take a look. If I have a titration with a diprotic acid, I end up with two equivalence points. And that's because if I if I just look at the overall reaction and let's take a look at carbonic acid, which has a which is diprotic. And if I write the full reaction, I need two sodium hydroxides for every one carbonic acid. And even if I write the net ionic, I still need two. Okay? But the reaction doesn't happen this way. It doesn't happen where I lose both protons um, at one time. It happens stepwise. Okay? So let's take a look at what that means. So in the first step, I have one hydroxide being added to the carbonic acid, and I lose just one proton. I lose one proton, and uh, that um, carbonic acid becomes, uh, cleaves some water, right? And then the, so the pH slowly increases as that hydroxide gets consumed. And because I have a, a weak at base also, I'm in the buffer region, right? I have this, this and this. This gets consumed as it gets added. So I've got this and this, which makes a buffer, which means I'm going to have that slow increase in pH, okay? And eventually I reach the equivalence point. I've, I've used up all the hydroxide. And I've converted all the H2CO3 into HCO3 minus. And I'm still in the acid range because this is acting as an acid. It's still got another proton to lose. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So I'm talking about this region here. We have the base being added. You know, it's in the coming in to the through the burette into the flask, right? I've got my carbonic acid in here. And Here's my buffer region where, I, as I add this, you know, it's going away immediately, causing this to happen. I end up with the weak acid and its conjugate base, so I'm in this buffer region. Eventually, I reach this point where I have an equal number of moles of the hydroxide and the carbonic acid, and that's my equivalence point. Okay. Once that happens, I get to step two. And now I am gonna my uh, bicarbonate ion is gonna lose another proton and become the um, carbonate ion. Again, it's gonna hit the buffer region because I'm gonna have some of this, which is now acting as a weak acid. It's conjugate base, and um, that makes a buffer. So I'm in the buffer region, right? So if I look at the graph, this is what I have. This is the second box. So here's where I have both the bicarbonate and the carbonate ion. Here's my equivalence point. It takes 25 milliliters of the base both times, right? Because so each time it's taken off a proton. And I so I have another equivalence point. This time it's going to be basic, right? Because this is this is what I have in there, okay? So the equivalence point is going to be basic. And once I'm past that equivalence point, all I'm doing is adding more hydroxide. I've got n none of these things left, and um, my pH becomes quite, quite basic. Okay. All right, so here's a question. We want to, and this is a typical AP question about a polyprotic acid titration. Um, so I have a solution of 0.1 molar sulfurous acid. It's a weak acid. It's being titrated with a strong base, KOH. And we want to know what species are present after the first inflection point and prior to the second inflection point. So let's take a look at what we have. So after the first inflection point, but prior to the second. So we're over here, right? So this happens in two steps, lose the first proton, then lose the second proton. So after the first inflection point prior to the second, I've used up all the H2SO3. It's all been consumed, right? And I've used up the hydroxide I've been adding as I add it, but if I 
as long as I have some water, and I do, I'm going to have a tiny little bit of hydroxide because, you know, we do have auto-ionization of water, but it's going to be uh, really a small amount. Um, of course, I'm going to have this still in there because I'm um, uh, at the point where we're going to start adding some hydroxide to this. And I've got the conjugate base of that. And I have also produced, of course, um, some of this. All right. So the answer is, I'm going to have a lot of stuff. I'm going to have um, the HSO3 minus, the SO3 minus 2, right? There are going to be my buffer. I got some um, hydronium ion and just a tiny little bit of hydroxide. Okay, we're going to stop there.